and welcome to episode 5 of the Staff Spotlight video series. Today we'll be interviewing Gene Peterson, current technology manager in the Bioenergy Technologies Office in Golden, Colorado. His primary efforts are focused on integrated biorefinery projects. Mr. Peterson has extensive experience in the biomass field, having worked 12 years at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory as a principal scientist and group manager in the National Bioenergy Center. He'll be interviewed by Brenda Berenson, also in the Bioenergy Technologies Office, supporting biochemical conversion activities since 2005. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good today. <laughs> so, can you tell me a little bit about your role in the biomass program? Yeah, the role in my biomass program, because <clears throat> I'm out here in Golden, um, has changed over time. The original role was to be managing the expectations of headquarters, particularly in managing projects that we that were obtained through solicitations and other such things, and work, for example, work at the laboratories. And in the past little while, it's changed a bit, so that now, uh, as you know, we're both headquarters, we're a headquarters employee now rather than a Golden employee, and our opportunity now is to be involved <coughs> not only in project management, but being involved in some of the program management work. So our work has kind of expanded, and we're doing uh, many things related to the program, as well as my specific responsibility when I was hired is to manage projects that we have, uh, have in our portfolio. So what do you like best about your job? One of the things I like best is people I work with, people like you, <laughs> other people in the program. I just think we have a wonderful group. Uh, we've, we've grown, uh, we've contracted, we've grown, and we've, but the, the group is just really wonderful. They're hardworking, they're very professional, uh, <clears throat> they worry about their projects, they're very concerned that we do the right thing, so I think that's wonderful. Another good thing I like about, the, about this program is that I've always enjoyed this biomass issue, biomass to chemicals and fuels, and this is an opportunity for me to actually understand the whole breadth of things rather than just a simple project like some of the projects I had on my own when I was working for the program. I actually get to see what other what companies are doing, what universities are doing, what uh, the industry is doing, and so that, to me, it really provides an opportunity for me to see a much bigger scope, much bigger breadth than you would if you're just managing a single project. So I really enjoy that breadth. And then the third thing I enjoy about the BOT program is that um, we operate well. It's a well-functioning program such that we actually make an impact uh, on, the, on the field. I think that people look to us as, as a source of, uh, of real valid data, real valid information they can use in carrying out their efforts in the biomass to fuels and chemicals. Great. So where do you see um, your area, biochemical platform, um, going? The biochemical platform is, has kind of been the centerpiece of the program for many years, but now it's not just the centerpiece. Now it's part of a bigger picture. And I think the biochemical platform still has a lot of opportunity left in it. I think that we had spent so much time focusing on cellulosic ethanol. <clears throat> it was always my complaint in the past that we spent too much time focusing only on cellulosic ethanol. But I understood why. You know, you, you don't have the budget to do everything. And it's an expensive effort to try and take care of all of this work. So I'm just excited that we get a chance now to expand that horizon a little bit in the biochemical platform, allow ourselves to look beyond just one, you know, a, a one-trick pony. We now have opportunity to look at advanced fuels. We have some, some little bit of additional products work we're looking at. We're getting into algae work. Algae is biochemical too, and, and that I think is a real, a real opportunity that we haven't had before to kind of expand the breadth of what we do. Because I think we need to be on the forefront. We shouldn't be sitting back waiting to see what somebody else is doing and then follow follow suit. We should be on the forefront, and I think we're given the opportunity now to do that. Great. So where do you see the biomass program going as a whole? In, you know, I think the biomass program, my hope and prayer for the biomass program is that we reach the point where we're just considered one of the opportunities for producing fuels and chemicals. I mean, there's petrochemical, there's natural gas, there's coal, and there's biomass. Um, I think people, I'm hoping that people will begin to look at us and say, we can make these chemicals, we can make these fuels productively, in a cost-efficient manner, so that they're just part of our everyday lexicon, they're part of our everyday work. When someone says, where are you getting that from? Well, you know, I'm getting this chemical from wood, and I'm getting this chemical from natural gas, I'm getting this chemical from oil, but they, they don't have, they don't think second, they don't, they don't have to decide which is the right one. We actually have produced enough data, enough, inform, enough information that we can actually say this is a valid opportunity, this is a valid approach, this biomass program could be 
uh, one of those programs that uh, has it should be a success, it should be a real success. So do you see the biomass industry being there in 10 years? Or in 10 else? years, I would like the biomass industry to be just like any other industry. I mean, we get criticized that we're trying to uh, infringe on the petrochemical industry, but I've, my background's in a lot of the petrochemical industry, and, you know, they get a lot of bad press from the, from the renewables industry, but they're good people. They, they actually, if you talk to them, you talk to their personnel, they're interested in what's going to happen to their grandchildren. And they, while they are very interested in maintaining the business of the petrochemical industry, they also understand there's got to be a future. And the future they look at is, includes uh, the use of biomass. Now, they, they have to deal with uh, the realities of cost and, and what it takes to make sure these things happen. But I think there's a, an opportunity for us to coexist. I think that the approach you've had lately to, to try and integrate ourselves into that industry versus trying to be a competitor is, is a better approach than what we've done in the past. I think it will have it will have value and merit in the future. Sure. So, where do you see um, your personal long-term goals within this program? Personally, <clears throat> as I tell people, why haven't you retired, Jean? <laughs> I said well, because you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plenty open enough to retire. <clears throat> it's not just money. Because there's, in my belief, there's some opportunities to see something real happen. I mean. When I started dealing with biomass in 1979, which is a long time ago, <clears throat> and saw the up, they were just talking about the enzymatic hydrolysis of cellulose. You know, that was they didn't even know what the enzymes were. They still tried to characterize what the enzymes were, and people uh, were saying this is going to be a business in a few years. But a few years has been a long time now. 79 to now is a long time, and what I'd like to see is one of these operating plants that really is doing in a commercial scale or a semi-commercial scale really up and running and actually making fuels making chemicals that that goes into the goes into cars and goes into transportation fuels and that we can actually say we have developed enough technology that people are willing to take the risk to invest in a large plant which we which is what you have now but that that plant actually operates <laughs> it makes a profit may not make a huge profit on this first plant, but they're willing to invest in this first plant so it works. And if it works, we can say to ourselves, you know, we, we, we've got an outcome that has a, a blessing to the country. Because a lot of people complain that it's, you know, too expensive. Why are you trying to compete with gas and fuel and oil that's cheaper? Well, yeah, we are competing a bit with it, but I, as I try to tell people about this whole business, yes, food prices have gone up. Yes, there is an issue with food versus fuel. but when you deal with producing fuels with our indigenous resources, with people that are doing it in our country versus another country, yes, the, the few cents it costs more to buy a steak, for example, that money doesn't go to Saudi Arabia, doesn't go to Venezuela, it goes to people in the United States. And I think that's a, that's a, an, uh, a concept people don't quite understand, because we're more worried about whether we're going to put food on the table, and, and I understand that issue, but as a big picture, we're talking about being able to bring the money back into this country. I mean, we just have projects that are now on target to have 50 permanent jobs for the next 20 or 30 years in, in, in the impoverty-stricken parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And I see hundreds of those going up in this country if we can be successful with some of this technology. And hundreds of those means hundreds of jobs, and it means local economies get revitalized. So I think that has some real value.